be veg, go green to save the planet. Yo! We now invite you to join us for part 20 of the conference titled The First Middle East Vegetarian Omi Veg Congress held in the city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates on December 7, 2010 with Dr. B. M. Hegday, MD, vegetarian, who expounds on the benefits of smiling and how understanding the different stages of the mind can help us become healthier. Now, where is the mind? Mind is a single word in the English language. But in the mother of all languages, Sanskrit, there are five words for a mind. The mind of a child, newborn child, which can just recognize, maybe after a few months, is called manas, M-A-N-A-S. That is something like a dark room with a window. So the child sees something in the window, it smiles. Do you know how many times a young child smiles in a day? Roughly? Roughly, young lady? 500 to 1,000 times it smiles. Ask yourself, how many times you smiled yesterday? The less number of times you smile, the regular is your heart rate. And when you don't smile, you may get a heart attack. So keep smiling. God gave smiling capacity only to man. Did you know that? God, no animal can smile. It can grin, but it can't smile. Smiling requires about 150 muscles to relax in the body. Which means, if you smile each time, you get up in the morning and say, <laughs> that's called grinning. No. Naturally, that's, that's a good one. That's the natural smile. And when you smile naturally, you relax so much, your blood pressure comes down, your heart rate comes down, and you'll be surprised, your headache disappears. And John Rowan, you know, Byron has written a beautiful book where he says, why does man alone smile? He says, I smile, comma, it's because I don't want to weep, full stop. Man is the only creature with the neocortex who gets all kinds of problems. Adhyatmika dukkha, Adi daivika dukkha, Adi bautika dukkha. You get a calamity, let's say. That is also something which you can't control, but you must be able to smile even then. That's called the manas. Now you send this child to school. What does the school say? That is a cow, four legs. This is a tree. And that is a chair. This is a table. Two into two is four, right? Correct? All the time? No, we'll come back to that. Now, this is called intelligence. What is intelligence? Past experience. You are taught that this is a cow. You know that's a cow. You don't know why it is a cow. Because your teacher told it's a cow. It's a cow. That's called buddhi. So, now the next man comes when you go to school. You see that. You say, oh, he's B.M. Megde. So far, it was just somebody. I just smiled. Now, I know it's B.M. Megde. I, if I want, I'll smile. If I don't want, I don't smile. You get the point? There's a difference. That's called buddhi. Now, very interesting. Alexis Carroll is a Nobel laureate, great man. He wrote a book, Man the Unknown, where he said, I quote, Every newborn child is a genius. Mark my words, every newborn child is a genius. Only to be converted into an idiot in school. <laughs> Did you get that? Teachers are here? Yes, yes. You know, there's a two kinds of education. The original education, real education was A. Dussier. E, A is out in Latin, dossier is to deliver. So, the child has the genius, teacher has to polish it and bring it out. So, teacher is a midwife. The teacher's job is, what does the midwife do? Stands by the side of a pregnant mother in pain, coaxing her, cajoling her, empathizing with her, sympathizing with her. But who delivers? The mother. In the class, who delivers? Teacher. That's the difference. Now, this was Socrates' method of teaching, which the Roman Empire did not like because he thought everybody becomes wise, kings cannot survive. So they said, A ducier, we will give a syllabus, curriculum, and then you teach it, and the student must learn that. So that's called buddhi. Now, you go one step further. After you grow up, now you have become, let's say, like uh, Prakash, you have become a chartered accountant. You have studied that two into two is four in the class, and then you have become a chartered accountant. You are a very important man, you are very big. Then you get what is called a chitta, little ego comes in. I, I, you know, till then there was no I. Now I comes. So that's called the chitta level. Chitta is a level of the mind where you put in your ego. Remember that? So what happens now? The BM is going there and you, your mind sees that and says, I don't like that rascal. See, see, that's the difference. You see the difference? First, when you're a child, BM goes there, you smile. Then you go to school, you say, it's BM I don't like, I don't smile. Then you become I, 
then i don't like bm egde so the problem was i do you get that till you get that i aham that pride then you have no problem at all so this was known to the rishis so that's why patanjali started yoga he said chitta vritti nirodha yoga chitta vritti undulations nirodha you stop it you become a yogi yoga is not kusti doing that in the morning that's not yoga yoga is chitta vritti nirodha yoga asana is stiram sukham asana for constant ease you get asana do you get that point so you can still become a good yogi and become a good human being and be healthy but what happens then supposing you say i don't like bm egde then you can have little viveka which says okay you don't like bm egde why to bother about him forget about him this is what the western thinking was you know when when um, uh, roosevelt was the president lot of people hated him but he was a nice man he never did anything wrong but people hated him and used to get worried about it so one day one his, his daughter asked him dad what do you do for that he said look when i don't have anything to do with the person he still hates me i take a piece of paper write his name on that tear it into bits and throw it into the waste paper basket so that he goes away from my sphere of activity that's called the next stage which is called purusha that's the next level of the mind so this is okay but not the best then you can go further up into higher level of mind which is called purusha shreshta ishwara you come to the level of ishwara ishwara in sanskrit means one who is one with the surrounding whether supposing somebody says there's an earthquake my house is gone i say okay it was meant to be like that or somebody says no look for your talk somebody has offered you a big house in dubai why don't you stay back i don't get puffed up did you understand that so you should neither get puffed up when you succeed nor get depressed when you suck and what do you do at that time bm egde is going there then you say my god it's already 10 o'clock this fellow has come all the way from india whether he's had breakfast or not i don't know so i go out invite him to my house give him some breakfast and that's the level of mind you reach you are absolutely tranquil and you have no disease whatsoever now medicine was pretty bad not only today it was very bad this was in 1823 this young man was a doctor and a, an mp he thought we hope there is a mental delusion a little while ago my friend was asking me why is it that you know bypass surgery is all uh, and uh, very good my father in law had by- wanted to have bypass surgery i was telling her we are in a delusion stage of delusion that was in 1823 do you know what he said medical world of today 1823 i'm talking he said is like an abscess on the human body with lot of pus i am going to start a new journal to really give the correct science and i call this as the lancet a lancet to cut it cut the abscess and that was a lancet which is now 185 years old and the most prestigious journal this is what he said weekly saw much of the medical establishment fundamentally corrupt tolerating both nepotism and incompetence in 1823 thomas wakely saw his journal as a lancet to open that up now what has happened perhaps in a century's time scientists will look back at today's research on cancer and say how horrible it was and this is what hillary butler wrote in the british medical journal the medical establishment is gone from being a fundamentally corrupt nepotistic bunch of incompetent practitioners in 1823 into a corporate monstrosity will cut all the wake fields of their knees in 2010 can you believe that now where did we go wrong we went wrong when we started think of organ not as a human being but as an organ this is a heart disease this is a brain disease i am a trained cardiologist but after some 10 years i realized i am a bloody fool so i became a doctor after that i became a doctor till then i was a cardiologist a pusher i was pushing a catheter inside it's called intervention have you heard of intervention interventional cardiologist I know many have heard of intervene. Go to the Webster's Dictionary when you go back to school and see intervene. It has three meanings. Third one is very interesting. Go in between with malice. What's that? Go in between with malice. Now, two things. The next thing is, my friend was asking me, Oh, Jerry, is diseases due to genes? Yes, we were thinking diseases are due to genes because we were using this Mendelian inheritance based on nuclear genes. the truth is nuclear genes are not important at all we have vital genes outside the nucleus the mitochondria which you don't know at all so our whole thinking of genetics is wrong now i'll tell you about our drugs the first cancer drug which is called nujol nujol in in latin means new oil it's a by product of petrol extraction can you believe that and that is what you're taking for cancer you get some chemotherapy which is just nothing but real poisonous chemicals now the chlorpromazine lot of you must have taken it 
Even children must have taken it. It's called Largactyl in the market. Even if you vomit a little, you get a Largactyl. You feel funny, you get a little Largactyl. Do you know what it is? It's a byproduct of rocket fuel. Now, you, all of you take painkillers, right? Who has not taken painkiller? Good, good. Good. Oh, I'm very happy. Very happy. Please do not take painkillers because all painkillers starting from aspirin to COX-2 inhibitors can produce a heart attack even after 5 to 10 years. Diabetes, for example, drug-induced diabetes. Lot of people take drugs which produce diabetes. Lot of people take drugs to lower their blood pressure which causes cancer. Now you must read this book when you go home. You must read this book, Gary Null's book on death by medicine or Starfield's work or there's the last one. This is a beautiful book, Man the Unknown, Alexis Carroll Wilco books. Now, human body has a wonderful wisdom. The human body tells you when you are not well. Now, supposing you are traveling, let us say, and you are very tense due to something, then certain parts of your muscles tense up. Maybe your neck muscle, your back muscle, your shoulder muscles tense up. So the following day, you have a neck ache, you have a back ache, or your shoulder ache. And what do you do? You go to the doctor. He takes an x-ray. He has not been x-raying your mind, what happened to you in the plane. But he has x-rayed you. And as it so happens that all of us don't have an identical x-ray. So slight changes is, ah, your spondylitis. So you're very happy, your diagnosis, your name. And especially ladies that are in their kitty party, they can talk. I have little BP. I have little cholesterol. You know, they're very happy because they're in a different class. But all this is wrong because that's not a disease at all. And the most important thing is, we need a new science of man. Now, this is important. Somebody was asking me, how can uh, drugs cause uh, Parkinsonism? How can drugs cause Alzheimer's? The Alzheimer's is purely due to these drugs. Cardiac drugs, cholesterol lowering drugs, sleeping pills, antidepressants, narcotics, stimulants, anticholinergics, anti-epileptics, and drug cocktails and mostly drug-induced. You read this book, it's just come out. Please buy this book, Drug-Induced Dementia. Dementia is Alzheimer's, you know, where, you, where your mind is, you don't know where you're doing. It's all due to drugs. And this girl lost her job in the American Navy. She was the chief of Naval Psychiatry Service, Grace Jackson. Because of her views, she lost her job. She joined a university as a professor, lost her job. But this book is worth its weight, not in gold, but in platinum. You take medicines, you know, you go to the doctor and say, I'll take this medicine, A to B, Z medicine. But did you know that every chemical molecule that the doctor gives you is chemically dextrorotatory and every body molecule is levorotatory? This girl is nodding her head. Did you know that, Ma? No. Anyway, so every drug that you take is a square plug in a round hole. But all herbal medicines are food. Remember that? They're food. They're levorotatory. And then it agrees with your body system. What is this? Tower of Pisa, isn't it? Prince Charles wrote an article. Modern medicine, for all its high-tech stuff, is slightly off-balance like the Tower of Pisa. You know, you see the Tower of Pisa there? Slightly off-balance. And I'll show you something else. What does this mean? You want evidence for everything. Now, this is a proof of doctors making mistakes. As recently as 1990, there were about 1,500 papers on doctor's errors. Today, in 2010, if you kept the papers one above the other, they'll be taller than the World Trade Center and maybe Burj Dubai might be the height. That many papers are there, thousands of papers, and it's been going steadily up like that. Vegan side effect, feeling the bond between all beings. Honorable viewers, thank you for your presence today for the first Middle East Vegetarian or MIVEG Congress on Words of Wisdom.